So have you guys heard of Jellyfin? Well, let me show you guys how to get it installed on Linux. What's up guys, this is Josh back with another video and today I wanted to show you guys how to get Jellyfin installed on Linux. And if you guys haven't heard of Jellyfin, Jellyfin is essentially a media server that you can set up on your own Linux server. And it's essentially the same thing as Plex. And it's also free and open source and it will allow you to stream and organize all your media files in one location. And this will pretty much be a step-by-step -step guide on how to get it up, installed and configured so you can start streaming all your media files today. So let's go down and hop over to Jellyfin's website so I can show you guys a little bit more about the application and then I'll walk you guys through the install process and getting it configured and set up so you can start streaming. Let's get to it. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream, complete, binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, so we are at jellyfin.org. And as you can see, it explains exactly what I said in the beginning of the video. Jellyfin is a volunteer built media solution that puts you in control of your media. Uh, stream to any device from your own server with no strings attached. Your media, your server, your way. And like I said, it's basically like Plex. And I know you guys have probably seen my Plex videos around, but I've been showing you guys how to uh, get Plex up and running on Linux servers in the past. Well, I wanted to go down and show you guys somewhat of the competition. Uh, and this is a good application that actually works just as well as Plex. And if it was, you know, not that great, then I definitely wouldn't do a video on it. But this is an awesome application uh, based on what I've seen. But you can go through look at all the information about it i'm not gonna read everything on it but as you can see it's pretty good it's just as good as plex but i definitely recommend if you're gonna set up one of these servers to check out the documentation it has a great extensive doc uh, documentation on how to install it how to administer the server as well as networking all kind of things that you would need to know about the server the documentation is it's well documented and then you can also contribute to the project uh, under this page. You'll see this is all the people that have contributed to this, you know, uh, project and it's constantly being developed. And if we go under the downloads page, this allows you to download everything you need for the server. They basically have a whole bunch of client apps. So you can install Jellyfin on Android. You know what I'm saying? Android TV. You can install it anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much anywhere, just like on Plex. Uh, and then also, this are the, these are the server downloads. Uh, and they basically walk you through the installation process. You can get it installed on Debian, Ubuntu, as well as they have an Orch version. So you can get it installed on the on a Orch server and basically all our Orch server is is just installing Orch and instead of continuing on with the installation process uh, by putting on a desktop environment you just skip that step and you basically have a server that's essentially what it is at the end of the day and then there's also instructions or downloads for Fedora and CentOS, Gentoo, uh, pretty much anything you can think of is on here. Generic Linux uh, Torball right here. Uh, so you can download that and work and, and get it up and going. And then they also have Windows, Mac OS, as well as Docker containers. So you can run Jelly Jellyfin in Docker. But like I said, I'm going to show you guys how to get it installed directly on your server. So let's go on and hop over to my virtual machine so I can walk you guys through how to get this thing installed. All right, cool. So we're SSH into our Ubuntu 22.04 server. As you can see, this is what I did. Just typed in SSH as well as the IP address, you know, typed in my password, and now we are connected to this server. 
and let's go down and clear the screen so, I, so you guys can kind of see exactly what I'm doing and basically what I'm doing is copying the uh, install script from uh, Jellyfin's website just to make it super simple for you guys we're not gonna add PGP keys we're not gonna add a repository and all that stuff this script will do everything for you so and all we have to do is verify that we have curl installed which I believe we do have curl installed on this server uh, but all you have to do is curl the SHA file down, which is basically a shell script, uh, and then basically run that script. That's what the sudo bash is going to do. It's going to run that script once it's downloaded. So let's go to and press enter. Uh, it's going to download. And as you can see, we do have curl. So we get to go and it's going to download our script and then it's going to run that script. And all we have to do is kind of wait for it to finish. And I did this on purpose so you guys can see that it will ask you for your sudo password because right here in the command, it is running sudo. So boom, all we got to do is type in our sudo password and boom, it'll go through. It'll check your system and it's basically saying determining optimal repository settings. And it saw these details of my operating system. So as you can see, it's using Ubuntu. Repository release is Jammy. So this is 22.04. So, and then AMD 64 architecture. And essentially, if you know anything about programming, what it's doing is setting variables at the end of the day, uh, and then go through the process of installing it because this install script is for Debian and Ubuntu. So it has to look at the system to see exactly what steps it needs to take so it finds out what the system is or what the release is of the actual system and then down in the code there are different procedures that run based on the distribution that you're using and so it'll skip everything else and just go straight to the procedure for jammy jellyfish for jellyfin so let's go down and press enter and that'll go through and finish the process. And like I was saying, it's gonna, like I said, I didn't wanna go through the whole process of adding GPG keys like I've done in the past or, you know, adding things to, or adding repositories that we use or whatever. This will basically do all that for you and then install it on there. And really all you had to do is go up and configure it at this point. So you guys will see that once I come back after this finishes. Now, back in the day when I did like my Plex installs or whatever, uh, we basically had to go through and start the services, you know, verify that they're running and all this. And like I said, this script will do everything for you. Uh, we don't have to worry about starting a Jellyfin service because it did it through the script. So as you can see, it, it spits it out, lets you know that the server is active and running as well as it's enabled. So anytime you reboot the server, Jellyfin will be running on that server, no problem. And as long as you see this step right here at the bottom says thanks you for thank you for installing Jellyfin and happy watching, you are good to go. And then also I wanted to point out one other thing. So basically, in order to get to your Jellyfin server, you need to connect to it via a web browser. And the default port for it is 8096. So all you have to do is type HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash the IP address. Don't forget the IP address and then port 8096. So they just leave that out because they obviously don't know what the what the server's IP address is. So and then plus, if you're doing this like in the cloud or something to that effect, you want to go down and log into this thing right away because right now this thing is open to the web so anybody can connect to it. Luckily, where I'm setting it at is on my internal network so no one can actually access it. But if you're doing this in the cloud and I'm just using that as an example, then you want to go down, hurry up and get into it because people are constantly scanning the internet for open ports, open you know sites and all that stuff. So you want to go in and log in because uh, you don't create the user accounts to tell you actually get to the server and go through the setup process, which is what we're going to do now. So let's hop over to my browser. We're going to walk you guys through configuring the Jellyfin server. All right, cool. Let's open up another tab uh, in my browser. And actually, let me go back to the terminal right fast and show you guys. I ran the IP command to find out what my IP address is. And it's 192.168.10.156. 
And so that will be different for you. I just want to make sure you guys know that, but let's open up another tab and paste in our IP address and boom, there we go. So we're at the startup uh, window. And like I said, you know what I'm saying? You want to go down and do this right away. This is open to anybody. And you'll see what I'm talking about once we go through these steps. You'll see what people have access to do if they get there before you do. And let's just basically follow the steps. It's not that hard or whatever. You select your English, your language, and mine is English. Now you can go down and select select a user account or create an admin user account. You can use Jellyfin. Uh, I always like to change my admin's account to like admin or something like that. Uh, and I'll remember it that way. I don't know. That's just an easy way for me to do it. And then let's go down and type in a password. You definitely want to do that. Uh, and then confirm that password, boom, and hit next, boom, that'll create that admin password for us. Now, what you want to do is set up your media directories. Now, I don't have any media directories that I can connect to on here, um, and maybe I can create something for you guys right fast, so just give me one second. And so it took me a little while, but I went on set up a share drive on this system so i can connect to some media that i have uh, but all we have to do is hit add media library and content type we want to specify movies because i added some movies well actually just one movie uh and then the preferred you know all your preferences down here so the display name you can name it whatever you want but the library settings you know down here the country you know all that good stuff uh it's a whole bunch of preferences under here but let's go down and add the folder so all you have to do is specify the location and my location i mounted it under a specific directory so mount media you could type it in or you could search for it and let me stop right here so you guys can see me search for it but let's refresh boom so it pulled up that folder that i created so boom there we go so i basically got one movie in there and i looked this up right fast just to see you know if it was uh free on youtube and this movie is free on youtube so uh but that's red dime from like 2012 but let's go down and press ok there and it'll add that directory and anytime i add uh some some form of media into this directory then it'll automatically refresh you know in this folder but like i said they got other settings you could do library settings so uh, you select your language which I'm it really don't matter I just go down and select it so you guys can see um, and I'm sorry you got to put English so there we go and then the country you can put the country so uh, United States boom uh, prefer embedded titles over file name so you can select that it's a couple other you know options in here this is one of the important options right here metadata downloaders so the movie database that's a good one as well as the open movie database that's a good one as well uh, automatically refresh metadata from the internet you could turn that on if you want to you know all that good stuff it'll fetch images and all that stuff from the movie database as well as embedded images and all that stuff so you can go through and grab that or it'll go through and grab all that for you uh you can save artwork into the media folder and then one thing about these folders you want to give it access to these folders so if you guys don't know much about linux permissions then check out some of my videos where i cover linux permissions now i'm not going to select anything else i'm going to just hit ok right there it'll go through you know and scan that directory for us i just kind of wanted to have something on here so you guys can you know at least see something on the screen now languages we already set that so that's fine uh select remote access right now it really doesn't matter uh i don't have the port open on my router in order to get remote access so I'm not really worried about it but i'll leave it on uh, you can also enable automatic port mapping so i'm not going to do that but let's hit next and then finish we're done so now we can go down and in, uh, log into our server so admin then type in our password for that admin account and press sign in and it'll log us into it let me go down and close that but as you can see it already found that that movie and you can go through and watch from here or you can connect via the apps and all that good stuff 
and like i said you're like we as you add directories because you can add other directories like this one is specifically for movies so the way it structures it it's going to look at it as movies so you can't put like tv shows in there and it's the same thing on plex like if you put some tv shows in there it's not going to recognize it because it doesn't recognize it it's only looking for things in this folder as tv shows so you have to add another directory and you have to go into the settings i don't want to go through all of that but you have to go through the settings and add an, another media directory and i'll have the audio blanked out but just show you guys how it works you just hit play boom you can go through the movie but as you can see yeah it'll show you know what you're watching currently you know all that good stuff you got a favorites tab so if you select something and make it your favorites you get to go so that's it you now know how to set up jellyfin on ubuntu server and i really hope this tutorial was helpful but thanks for watching please like share and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions leave comments down in the comments below and of course Keep it techy.